Uh, so this is Ozo Creator. Uh, this is a freely downloadable program. Uh, it runs on a Mac Pro. Uh, it has to be one of the Mac Pro like trash cans. Uh, you need at least an AMD Fire Pro Dual D500 uh, video card setup. Uh, it relies heavily on GPU processing. We recommend a AMD Fire Pro Dual D700 for best uh, performance though. And that's what we're running on here. Uh, so Creator is actually a pretty simple piece of software. In here, you have a number of import options. You can import a raw capture, that's the .ozo raw format. Uh, you can ex uh, import DPX files. This would be a per camera DPX file that you would have exported from Creator. EXR files, same thing as the DPX, except EXR format. Stitched, uh, this would be a stitched uh, stereoscopic or monoscopic panorama. And then import audio, you can import a multi-channel wave. Here we have uh, a couple of raw captures. Um, and you can see here, you're, you see the per camera mode. Um, and one of the cool things about it is you can actually go into a kind of a quick stitch mode and then you can actually display where your seams are going to be. And then in here you can actually move your seams around or you can uh, you know, make them larger or smaller. Uh, and you can also switch between the two eyes so you kind of get a, a left eye, right eye view. Um, you can also, if you double click on this, go into kind of like an equal rectangular view and pan around inside there. And what this is doing is that what we call pixel picking, so it's actually essentially switching between camera views on the fly. Uh, this, it's not, uh, when, we, when we go into this mode, it's not actually stitching per se. It's just switching between the cameras. And you can actually do this with a DK2 HMD as well. DK2 is the only HMD we support because that's the only HMD that's supported on the Macintosh platform. Uh, no one, like they just haven't written drivers for the uh, Consumer Rift or the uh, HTC Vive. Uh, another thing you can do is in the back where it does go monoscopic, you can adjust the back seam convergence with this parameter here. So if you have something that's very close to the camera, you can converge on on your detail here. Um, obviously it goes a little bit double in the back because you're converging so much closer. So sometimes you want to leave it uh, converged at infinity. Um, but that's something you can also adjust. Once you get all of these parameters set up, uh, you can then basically directly stitch, uh, if you wish. Um, and you can stitch to uh, DPX files. Uh, you have multiple resolution choices. Uh, you can stitch 2D or 3D. 2D is really just exporting only one eye. Uh, and then normal and high quality stitching. Uh, the difference between normal and high, and high quality stitch is normal is actually what's being shown here. It's a simple just um, de-warp of the fish eyes and a cross blend. A uh, high is an actual optical flow process to interpolate the seams to, to better and more smoothly uh, stitch your footage together. Uh, also, if you wish, you can export um, de-warped to a rectangular per camera uh, footage. So if you want to take this into like car VR or some other footage, you want to do some paint work, you want to do some roto work, you can use those as sources if you wish. Um, backing up a little bit, one step, um, you can export multiple uh, formats. Uh, DPX, OpenEXR, Cinema DNG, and High Bitrate MP4s are all per camera files. So you will get eight image streams of DPX, eight image streams of EXR, eight streams of DNG, or eight individual high bitrate MP4s. There, and those will all be the um, the fisheye images. So each one of those will look like this. Uh, you can also export processed audio from here. Um, which gives you a few options for how many uh, uh, how many channels you want to export. 5.0 is probably the most compatible format, so that's what we recommend if you want to have binaural uh, spatial audio. Um, and you can also export a 360 editorial um, with, uh, for example, 5.0 speaker layout and a timestamp. Uh, let me see if I can find an example of one of those on this computer. So this would be a 360 editorial. These are burn-ins for the speaker angles. So this is a 5.0 burn-in. And what you can do is you can have this up on a monitor 
and you use it as a 2D reference for mixing in 360 degree audio. So you know if someone's here, they should be coming from zero degrees. If you're coming from here, they should be coming out of your left speaker. If they're coming out of here, they should be coming out of your side left speaker, for example. And if they're coming from here, it'd be 180 degrees right behind you. Uh, it also burns in time code. It has two channel uh, stereo scratch audio and a SMPT time code track. This is an MOV file. So I would recommend you would export these first of all your raw captures. You do your edit in Premiere or Resolve or whatever you use, Avid, etc. Um, and then you can come back to Creator and then export your um, either your per camera DPXs uh, and then perhaps denoise them, maybe do a color match pass on them, bring them back into Creator and stitch them in here, or you can bring them into Cara VR, stitch them in Cara VR, etc. Uh, you can also render stitched files directly to MP4 if you want. If you have like a really fast turnaround product, a project, um, you can basically choose your stitching quality. Um, fast, obviously, is, is that de-warping and cross blending that stitches very quickly. Uh, maybe like four frames per second or so, depending on the speed of your drives and the speed of your computer. Uh, slow, that's the optical flow pass, that's about 10 seconds per frame. It's much slower, but it's higher quality as well. Okay. Can you also generate a, um, a stream for, let's say, um, YouTube, YouTube 360 degree streaming? So what you would do in that case is you would basically, uh, again, export to MP4. Um, and then select Ambisonics, because that's the audio, spatial audio that YouTube supports. You export this MP4, you then have to download a, um, a spatial media injector program from Google, I believe. If you search for that on, on YouTube, um, you'll find the spatial media injector program. You basically run that, point it to this MP4 file, you say, this is my stereoscopic talk bottom file, it has Ambisonic audio, um, it injects the proper metadata, and then you can uh, upload, it writes out a new version of that MP4 file with the metadata injected, then you can upload that to YouTube and get spatial audio with uh, uh, encoded for Google Cardboard with top bottom stereoscopic okay. footage. And the live streaming? <laughs> live streaming is a different product altogether, actually. Uh, and that's something I'm afraid I'm not particularly well uh, versed to be able to speak about. I'm more of the post guy. Okay. Um, but there are other people here that might be able to speak better about uh, the live solution. Let, let's finish this, for, this first. Yeah. Uh, we have a quick mini style presentation soon. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you can cool. wrap it up. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, and that, frankly, that's pretty much it. Um, there's a queue, uh, job queue, so you can, like, queue up stitches, queue up exports. They go into your queue, and then you execute the queue, and they happen, like, one after another. Okay. So, uh, that, that's pretty handy. Uh, and then this is a timeline. You can drag multiple things to the timeline and edit up on the timeline if you want. Uh, again, very limited editing capability. Okay.